Galaxy Grudge Match. Galaxy Grudge Match. Galaxy Grudge Match. Okay, Max. Point proven. Sheldon does indeed say that. That is something he says, yes. Didn't want to leave anything out at all. Welcome to part two of this Galaxy Grudge Match, everyone. You best put seatbelts on your ears, viewers, because we're going to take them for the ride of their lives. Let's get started with Adam Gregory's comment, shall we? I honestly wasn't too familiar with either character before this, but I can't stand Sheldon, so Moss wins. GG. Okay, in all seriousness, while both sides make some strong arguments, I think I have to go with Moss here, mainly because I think Sheldon's character flaws would be the more damning of the two in a situation like this. Sheldon may have more experience and knowledge from the get-go about gaming, but I don't see how that means Moss is inexperienced with it or wouldn't at least be aware of these old arcade games, just because he's not often shown gaming. I mean, if my grandma can know half the games represented in Pixels without even touching an arcade cabinet, then I don't think it would be much of a stretch to say Moss wouldn't be a slouch in this area. Coming back to the point about Sheldon's character flaws though, while I agree if Max that he wouldn't be outright malicious or try to put others in harm's way, I can still see him easily getting jealous of Moss, who is more composed, whether or not that's just him being oblivious. In fact, Moss being less experienced with video games might actually make this more of a possibility, since we know how full of himself and proud of his nerdiness Sheldon is. So, to see this random guy who technically knows a lot less than him possibly doing it just as well, if not better in some scenarios, I think his ego would probably get the better of him, making him more likely to screw up and make mistakes as he tries to one-up his newfound rival. And in situations as dire as this, you really can't afford to do that. I think Sheldon's character flaws and Moss's character flaws may go hand in hand with this situation. Moss isn't a fearless demigod fighting off bullies left and right. He's had moments, but mostly he's reserved like Sheldon is. Both would be cowardly at the start, but as the fight goes on and Moss dons women's slacks, both will become more confident in their abilities to fight the pixels. He is right in that Moss would likely know games anyway, but I still believe that either way, Moss is going to research. He's shown that he's one to plan and research before going into things before. With the Earth on the line, this would be no different. I'm still under the belief that Sheldon having more gaming experience in general, doing it since he was young Sheldon, that might help a bit. Though, honestly, it's not as big a factor as I made it out to be in my debate, considering Moss and his learning abilities. But, what I think pushes Sheldon above Moss and makes him better suited for this situation is Paintball. This is a game Sheldon and his friends regularly play, and Sheldon has even made great strategic plans during Paintball. To be fair, a lot of the games that Sheldon regularly plays are stuff like Halo or Mario 64, neither of which are arcade games. Moss regularly goes to the arcade, so I don't think the gap is as big as I initially thought. Also, Sheldon's plans in paintball usually revolve around his friends, and fail when they aren't in the mood to play. Also, I don't think he's an expert at all. Pretty sure he's more casual. Next up, we have another person from the UK, Biffweed. Hopefully, he'll be cultured enough to go with Moss. I'm leaning in favour of Moss, though it's less that I believe Moss would excel and more that I believe Sheldon isn't cut out for this at all. Sheldon is a coward who hates conflict, partially because he's a massive germaphobe who doesn't like other people touching him. If he recoils at people's unwashed hands, how do you think he's going to react to aliens with god knows what kinds of bacteria on them from other planets? Then there's the kind of challenges Sheldon would actually have to overcome. Centipede, Pac-Man, and Donkey Kong. Pac-Man was covered well enough in the video, so I don't need to go over it again. I can't see Sheldon doing well in Centipede. He has experience with FPS games, but experience doesn't always translate to skill. In one episode, Sheldon, Leonard, Howard, and Raj all get destroyed in a game of Overwatch by a group of actual children. Then there's Donkey Kong. Sheldon isn't a particularly athletic person, and he himself admits he hardly ever runs, so I doubt he'll excel in jumping over barrels. Then again, Kevin James isn't exactly the peak of fitness, and yet he's still managed. But Sheldon is going to lack the confidence to make any kind of progress. Moss would at least have the courage to move if he had woman slacks on, but Sheldon has nothing that could boost his confidence, so he'd likely either never try to make it to the top or get crushed by barrels. Also, what kind of a name is Biff? Says he when you pop in a kind of pissbury door. Biff. Wait, he didn't know Moss? Never mind, not cultured. Sheldon being a germaphobe may not come into play, considering the gang and Pixels wear protective suits, so Sheldon may feel safe in this atmosphere. I'll admit, Sheldon doesn't deal with change as well as Moss, who even outright told Roy he was sick of their same routine. But thinking about the circumstance, it's actually about Sheldon protecting his way of life. The government in this scenario asked for him and Moss directly, 
which will make Sheldon feel much more important in this situation, and his arrogance could arise from this, and make him think that not only can he easily win this, he's the only one qualified to. I still think Sheldon's anxieties are going to drag him down, unlike Moss, who has gotten serious and has become actually pretty cool on occasion. Even without his slacks, Sheldon isn't athletic. Moss was shown jogging when training at least. Sheldon apparently doesn't jog much. I guess Moss also has punched a guy and knocked him out. While not useful against pixel creatures, it does show greater physical strength. Perhaps this could assist with his leg strength too? Well, when it comes to being athletic, I have seen Sheldon run away from an angry dog because he had hot dogs in his pocket, and Penny once took Sheldon out jogging. She could potentially assist Sheldon in the downtime, helping him train for this event while Leonard, Raj, and Howard help Sheldon out in other aspects. I actually forgot to even mention Penny in Part 1. She's played paintball too, and has even played video games with the guys, and done shockingly well. So she could be another addition to the Seamen. Oh, now that Penny's involved, I think Moss might be screwed. But seriously, I do agree that Sheldon has got to better help. But Roy and even Jen have trained Moss. Roy with physical stuff, and Jen more with research. More support, I guess. Maybe Richmond could teach Moss that teleportation trick he randomly pulls off in the final episode. Roy and Jen would certainly calm Moss through these times, but I feel like Penny could do the same. She's very patient with Sheldon, takes care of him when he's sick, and is generally there for him. Next comment comes from Brandon. Brandor Online. I don't think it should be undersold the importance of having prior knowledge in this match. Every Pixel's creature was not defeated solely through physical talent, but Sam and Ludlow's extensive knowledge on the habits of these video game characters, to which, I believe, Max presented a better case for Sheldon being more aware in this regard. There's also the fact that the planet is at stake, to which I believe Sheldon's naivety would be more helpful to cope with this fact, whereas Moss would most likely get too roped up in his fear. And young Sheldon, the first time he ever played a video game, he dreamt of being inside the video game. So this is a situation that Sheldon literally wants to be in. The fact that it's a competition also makes me want to side with Sheldon, as he's far more competitive. Again, like Max said, even willing to sabotage his opponents to win. From what I've seen of both, Moss is absolutely more endearing, but I'm gonna side with Sheldon here. Brand or offline. I personally don't believe that video game experience is as big of a deal as previously stated. This is the most common argument for Sheldon, and yet it's so easy to write off by saying that Moss could just research. Maybe play the games? It's not that hard. There's a difference between playing video games and actually being good at them. That's what separated Sam Brenner from the other military men who were training with video games. They were still not nearly as good as Sam Brenner, who actually knew what he was up against. Sheldon may not be an absolute expert in video games, but he knows quite a bit more than Moss from what I've seen. And that may be enough to give him at least an advantage here, even if it's not a major point. I think what Brandon says about it being a competition, and how that would set Sheldon off to try his damn best at winning while Moss likely wouldn't care, really helps here. If Sheldon is determined to do something, he generally goes above and beyond to make it happen, and that will certainly help him here against Moss. That could be a double-edged sword leading Sheldon to become more flustered. If you're running, you feel a lot less stressed than if you're racing. Weird analogy for flying aliens, I know, but stuff like this means a lot to Sheldon. Moss will likely act the same, whether he's engaged in a bet or not. Oh, also, I do not agree with the sabotage arguments at all. Tell me, because I didn't actually hear any good ideas. What would Sheldon do? What could he do that wouldn't put Moss's life in danger? If he pulls Moss's engine out in Pac-Man, Moss will probably die. Same goes for making his guns malfunction. And like I said, if Sheldon tries to sabotage Moss, that's time wasted. Both are gonna need to train. If Moss trains more, maybe he could match Sheldon's skills with a gun. I will say, sabotage was one of my weaker arguments, and it was more so me thinking it would be in character for Cooper. But my main points don't really rely on him being able to sabotage Moss. I believe he can still win this fight fair and square. That being said, if he sabotaged Moss's car for Pac-Man, he wouldn't even arrive to face Pac-Man and he wouldn't be in danger. So that actually is an effective way to sabotage Moss at the one game Sheldon sucks at. Now let's take a crack at Combo Breaker's comment. So I think this match ultimately comes down to one factor, reaction and decision making. Moss in mere moments calculated someone's smoking habits with next to no info. But more importantly, when wearing women's slacks, he without hesitation stopped a mugging and confidently watched movies with an actual flipping cannibal. A cannibal who intended to eat him. 
Sheldon has cried when trying to pick between a PS4 and an Xbox One. Sheldon had to run away to hide in a comic shop when Penny and Leonard had a fight. Let's not forget how self-centered Sheldon is. I mean, he was extremely rude to his friends because they had big news on the same day that he was going to get his Nobel Prize. So if the military gives Moss praise over him, it could set Sheldon off. But my final point that seals Sheldon's fate is his crippling fear of change, such as when he freaked out and panicked because the elevator was finally fixed. So imagine how he'd cope when video game characters start taking over the world. This is treading a lot on what Rivet already said. You mentioned his standing up to muggers, and I think that's actually a detriment here. Moss, in that moment, believed he could kick two grown men's asses on his own. Luckily for him, they were cowards who are robbing an old lady, but against any pixel creatures, standing up to them like that may not go so well. Plus, the cannibal was a nice guy! He was a fine young cannibal. Having the confidence to stand up to two men isn't the same as having the confidence to fight actual aliens. I think Moss is actually in a perfect in-between ground, where he won't be too confident because of how dire and dangerous the situation is, but he also won't be nearly as intimidated as Sheldon will be. I think over the course of these matches, Sheldon's confidence will rise, and Moss is very well might too. But when Sheldon gets confident, he'll probably get more confident than Moss thanks to his arrogance. It would be bad if he were arrogant and had nothing to back it up with, but he's got laser guns and the skills to fight them off. Okay, uh, the next comment is a bit of a doozy. I say Shelton because he knows pop culture, meets Stan Lee, and became a former senior theoretical particle physicist at the California Institute of Technology, focusing on string theory and its alter ego, M-theory, and he is solely responsible for the university's six-loop quantum gravity calculations. Cooper's research spans particle physics and particle cosmology, and studies the interplay between particle physics and cosmology during the physical cosmology of the universe. Uh, uh... I think he might be saying Shelton's smarter and wins through that? Well, yeah, he made a death ray. That was never really a deciding factor since two normal guys got this job done in the movie. Also, as much as I love the guy, what does meeting Stanley have to do with anything? He didn't make video games. Even if he did, if I met Miyamoto, I don't think I'd be able to fight building destroying aliens. This guy probably just read Sheldon's wiki page and called it a day. Sheldon would be disappointed in this assignment. Honestly, while I do like the Big Bang Theory, I'm gonna go with Moss on this one. Mostly because I think Sheldon is gonna be a coward here. He's shown to be afraid of birds before. So he's gonna be afraid of a giant Pac-Man ready to eat his face off. Moss, on the other hand, won't be afraid of this. Moss could likely make a better plan than Sheldon could. Also, I think Sheldon being very stubborn is gonna be his ultimate downfall here, since he's probably not gonna be the one to go with the plan and do his own thing, which will screw everything up. <laughs> Looks like Sheldon just got bazinkered. <laughs> yeah, Sheldon's afraid of birds, Max. How's he gonna deal with Galaga creatures? They fly too. We've established Sheldon can be scared more easily than Moss. And I've said why I think Sheldon can rise above this to save his way of life. So, I think we're covered here. Nice try, Patrick, you Big Bang fan. Next comment! This is a close one. While I think either could have a shot at winning the high score outside of Sheldon, I think the points that were made for him made a bit more sense. Like Sheldon having the video game experience and his experience of stuff like paintball, which is better proof that he would know what to do in a situation of pixels than anything that was presented on Moss's side. While Pac-Man is probably one of Sheldon's biggest weaknesses here, like Max said, it's only one event out of three or four, so Sheldon has more opportunities that he'd be better at than Pac-Man. Not to mention he could probably sabotage Moss's car by making it to where it can't drive or something similar to that, so that everyone else would have to take on Pac-Man without Moss while he's back with his broken car trying to fix it or something, while the rest are out there getting what could have been Moss's points. The only other flaw presented for Sheldon would be stuff like he couldn't make decisions like the time he was trying to choose between the PS4 and the Xbox. But I don't see how that would apply much here. There isn't really two options he has to decide between when trying to defeat Pixels. If the government tells Sheldon what's happening, Sheldon will most likely be able to make his own plan on what to do with the situation, and he could follow through with his plan and make it work. He's made big elaborate plans that he's followed through with before, so I don't see what's stopping him now. Besides, maybe the stakes of the situation. But I don't think Moss would hear if you fail video game characters destroy the world, it'd be totally fine either. When I was talking about being indecisive, I was mostly referring to Pac-Man, because you have to make big decisions. If you don't, you might think you could have done something different. Maybe you could have turned left instead of right. I do think a lot of his other points are pretty solid though. Pac-Man not being a huge part of this, much like the actual movie, and Sheldon having his paintball experience. 
even if he's casual, he still plays it and strategizes in it, which can directly translate the pixels and give him an edge. Okay, um, now we have the last comment from our beloved Ducko. Between the two, Sheldon could be considered more of a cartoonish super genius, but also pettier and less socially adept, though both have their problems there. Sheldon's personality could be a double-edged sword when it comes to high-pressure situations such as these, especially since the somewhat cooler-headed Moss. Moss would care less about proving himself here. In terms of technical aspects, Moss works with technology and is an expert in that field, whereas Sheldon is a physicist. Neither deal with weird video game aliens, but Moss works in a closer field to video game technologies. Is an expert in the fields of mathematics, machinery construction, computers, and general inventions. This makes me believe that he's more likely to find technical ways around the pixel aliens. Much like Independence Day. Meanwhile, Shelton's expertise in real life physics sadly is not applicable to early arcade video game era creatures. Not to mention Shelton is infamously bad or at least averse to driving which is necessary in defeating certain Pixels creatures. Even after secretly getting his driver's license, he still doesn't prove any consistent expertise behind the wheel, and still tells others to drive for him. Moss has no such aversion. I'd also say that Moss is better at throwing down and would kick Shelton's ass, if that's what it came down to, no less of an authority than Family Guy, who even had the Big Bang Theory's cast members voice acting, showed that Shelton Cooper is actually physically weaker than the average human. Wait, what? With actual numbers cited in everything, the official involvement of Sheldon himself makes this more valid than Rivet's beloved Mario clip. Maybe Sheldon should have stayed behind the scenes out of harm's way while letting a real chat like Moss be the face of the operation. I can't believe I'm saying things in this way. I... It, is one of your points that Moss would kick Sheldon's ass? How would this scenario lead to a fight between the two? I mean, I don't disagree, but this is not a factor. Why are you even mentioning Family Guy? Surely that is a reliable source and is canon to Cooper. Oh, by the way, if we ever use the Cookie Monster, uh, cookies are basically like drugs to him and they're ruining his life. That's a Family Guy source, don't forget to use that. His first point is solid though. I'd say Moss, even if he's a little airheaded, deals with stressful situations better. There's an entire episode of the IT crowd dedicated to stress, and Moss stayed the most consistently cool out of Roy, Jen, and himself. The driving thing is also solid, but there's not much to say regarding that aspect that hasn't already been said. Moss is more calm under pressure, but not by much. He still has multiple instances of needless panic. He couldn't just say Jen was out, leading to her fake death. He can't just answer one question in court. He's not just going to be casually busting aliens. He'll be cowering in his boots alongside Sheldon for their first two challenges before both gained their confidence. You mentioned Moss being better with technology. But I don't think you've taken into account Sheldon's death rays, playing around with circuit boards, and helping build Monty. He isn't lacking in technical skill. Consider that Sheldon's job is to be out there making breakthroughs in science, while Moss is just on the phone instructing people to turn their computer off and on again. In terms of the work Moss does, I think he's more skilled than Sheldon. It's his literal living, and he knows it enough to find circuit boards funny. But yeah, I don't think the gap is too big. But moving on, poll time! Alright, so it looks like Shelton had the vote majority here, but Moss actually had the comment majority, with five comments to his name and three for Sheldor. The poll is really starting to feel pretty irrelevant now, I'm not sure why we still have it. I applaud you all for not just siding with the popular one. I'm quite aware that the IT crowd isn't very big compared to the Big Bang Theory over in the US, although I guess more people would dislike Sheldon, so maybe that's it. I will say despite what the poll thinks, this was a ready close fight and both of us were on the fence multiple times. However, lucky for me, I still stand by Moss having this in the bag. Bazinga! In actuality, despite it being extremely close, we ended up both siding with Sheldon Cooper, albeit barely. Both had a lot of factors in this match that made it tricky to discuss, but Ribbit, why did you convert to the Church of O? Well, since I'm in a church now, I'll explain why if I was in the audience and I was a priest as well, I would shout HA! WRONG! at myself. There were a lot of hoops you had to jump for that reference. Speaking of jumping, we agreed that both would tie in Donkey Kong, probably. Neither have shown to be more athletic than the other. Why would either jump? It's a sitcom. Moss might be a little bit more athletic, but neither have jumped. And besides, in Pixels they had their guns when they arrived in Donkey Kong, but their guns disappeared after cutting away, so they couldn't just shoot him. 
But Sheldon and Moss are both really smart, so they actually just shoot him from the bottom. Still, at Pac-Man, I definitely have to give it to Moss, who's never shown a fear of driving, which is a straight-up consistent character flaw for Sheldon. A couple other factors, like Sheldon being freaked out by this change, were definitely points against him winning this one. Both would be horrified by this scenario, but I also think both have it in them to fight back against the aliens if it means protecting the world. Sheldon wouldn't run from this because he'd be running into a doomed future, but I think if Sheldon has his friends at his side, and Penny saying soft kitty to him, he'll be able to be more calm, and his self-assurance and cocky nature would let him get over it, and fight really well thinking he's the only one who really can. And finally, Centipede and the All Out War, which is where I believe Sheldon wins. For the exact same reasons, really. The paintball experience, coupled with his ability to create turrets to help him, it makes it far more likely for Sheldon to win, especially considering his planning skills. Now, Moss has shown to plan too, and I believe that by the war section, Moss will be much better off. But so will Sheldon, so I don't think Moss will be more skilled at shooting opponents down by that point. Sheldon will have expanded on his already impressive planning and shooting skills to become something much more dangerous. This is the most badass way I've heard someone describe Sheldon Cooper from the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> At the end of the day though, me and Ribbit came to the conclusion that both actually could pull this off and save the day. If Sam Brenner and Ludlow, who are just normal people, can manage, we think these two intelligent and skilled nerds can do it too. So, both of them are gonna walk out of this as heroes, but Sheldon gets to brag about winning their little bet. I'm sure Sheldon will be very tactful about this, very mature. Let's see how Kevin James and his little scheme worked out against Pixels. Moss and Sheldon had warmed up to the idea of taking out the many pixelated monsters that were spawning from space. However, Moss ran into a hiccup on the battlefield. His gun suddenly went ablaze. Ugh, that is typical. Wonder why he's done that. Moss turned his blaster over to see a Made in Britain label. Ah. Uh... Moss headed up to the spacecraft, as did Sheldon. After Kevin James told them that they both suck at Donkey Kong, despite neither actually sucking at Donkey Kong, and Cubit pisses on the ground, they were able to stop Donkey Kong with their combined efforts. They made their way back to the ground and find all of the creatures gone. However, thanks to Moss's gun malfunctioning, Cooper's score was greater. Don't worry, that was the predetermined outcome based on our experiences and skills gathered throughout our lives. It's not your fault I was raised superior, this is just logic. What? Oh, right, there was a bet. <laughs> I am a giddy goat. Sheldon was confused. He thought he and Moss were locked in a serious battle of wits, but he came to realise he was focused on getting the score for no reason. But Sheldon rationalised that his drive to win the bet might have been what helped them save the world, and so took this calmer than he usually would. Sheldon offered Moss a handshake to show that there were no hard feelings, and the two left on good terms. 